So there is more drama between Brittany and her ex Kevin Federline. I hate this because it's actually surrounding their two sons. Mm -hmm. So the two have been feuding ever since Kevin gave an interview about Britney's strained relationship with their sons who are now 15 and 16. And yesterday, Britney posted a lengthy message on Instagram accusing her boys of being, quote, hateful toward her. When the boys would visit her, they would just go to their room, she would say. And the visits went from two or three days a week to just one. This is all according to Britney. Now, Kevin posted three videos that are now deleted of Britney arguing with her boys when they were young. Now, keep in mind, we are not sure of the context and the videos appear to be taken without Britney's knowledge. Now, in one, Brittany is upset after her son went into a store without shoes. Take a look. Have you lost your mind? Lost I do care, but I'm shocked as with you. Oh. And I don't know what to do. Is and it? I'm scared of you because you're weird because you're going through puberty. I don't know what to say, but I do care more than you know. You say I'm but weird. don't be, my little body can't handle all of that. But it's like sometimes I just don't even know what to say with you. I was in shock and I do care. So in a statement, uh, statement, Britney's lawyer said Kevin violated her privacy and dignity and his actions may constitute criminal cyberbullying behavior. Now, Kevin, I just want to say he claims that he and the boys decided to post this together. It was a family meeting because the boys were receiving a lot of hate for their actions based on Britney's alleged claims and they wanted to be able to show their side of the story. I also know that this is such a delicate coming from parents like this is everyone's like worst nightmare we're treating this very delicately and we're covering this because you all are talking about it and i hope that our conversation can help shape the narrative because this is serious absolutely yeah i, I there's a couple of things to unpack here one i don't condone Kevin Federline putting this video out, right? Even if he is right, I have been on his side, actually. The blind support for Britney Spears kind of boggles my mind, right? Kevin has always been the quote unquote loser, right? He does this, he raised those boys, okay? He did do some good. And maybe he's at a breaking point where he's like, everyone is supporting Britney blindly and I can't do anything right. I'm gonna show you what it's really like. And I gotta be honest with you, for Britney's defense, I've been there. I've lost my cool. I yell at my kids. If there was a phone around, I would look exactly like that in her defense, right? You don't, she didn't know a camera was there. We're all human. Let that be where it is. But I think, you know, we really have to get to the bottom of this. What's going on with Brittany? What's going on with Kevin? I think he's a good father. He's not that loser. He's raised them. He has 75% control of them right now. And I think now the lawyers coming after Kevin Federline, there's two boys involved, two teenage boys that have been through enough with all of Britney Spears and Kevin that just want to have a normal yeah, life. And, and I think we need to put this to bed. Je at some Jeff, point. I'm going to add on to what you just said. There's two boys involved, and there's also the internet yeah. and lawyers and y y judges. And that's the and problem. Two teen boys. Yeah. Like, your worst man. years are. Your most vulnerable years are your teens. When you're trying to form your idea of what this, the world is, Sam, that's going to affect your future partners and where you're going to live and what you're going to do for work, you're also getting adults telling you they hate you. This is what happens when you allow people to break that force field of your home. And Jeff, I appreciate the, the compassion that you just spoke on with this, and Sam, the way you said the subject, because as parents, we understand that they, there's no like black and white, like they were all wrong. And I, when I listen to that conversation, this is not me taking Britney's side, but what, what I heard was somebody who was trying to say, I care about you, and I don't know how to articulate that, and I don't know how to show that, and I feel like this is going bad, and I don't know how to stop it. Please just respect me. It was almost pleading, and I, what I heard from those, the, the young man that was speaking was just a disaffected person that yeah. felt like he wasn't talking to his mom. Mm. Like, when you talk to your mom, there's a softness in your voice, and he's just like, so I'm weird, tell him. Really? Like he's talking in almost like a combative, Unattached, like yeah. the way like two middle schoolers, which I taught for five years, the way they would argue with each other. So I, I just felt sad. Tori? I don't know. I have a different take on this and I appreciate everyone's take. I'm not a parent, so I also want to make that really clear. All of this would be a lot easier for me to pick sides if that conservatorship wasn't in place. That is a big hole of blackness that Kevin went with Jamie, her dad with. When they say family, put that video out, they include Jamie, her father, in that. So I find the conservatorship, which a judge has found to be abusive in some ways and to end it, 
might have caused problems between Brittany and her sons that she didn't mean to cause, they didn't mean to cause, but the apparatus around them caused. And I don't feel safe sort of taking either side because I blame Jamie Spears. Now, did she need to be institutionalized? We all saw 2007, her shaving her head, things were wrong. But she says she had medicine against her will, an IUD against her will. She used text messages saying, he's trying to kill me with this lithium. I'm concerned that we're missing a whole context. But we're it's also missing, and I agree with right. you. I totally agree with you, but I also know that there's two sides to every story. And yes, and, and, and sometimes, there's a clear perpetrator and a victim. Right, totally agree right. with you. We don't know that here no, we because don't. we only hear Britney's side. I think and we I've do know. I think we do know that it's not that it is uh, amorphous and it is ambiguous, Sam. I don't think there can be two sides when we're but, talking about a conservative. But when you ship. look on the inner, totally. Mm -hmm. But when you look I'm on sorry the internet, you early. only hear. Now, when it comes to the conservatorship, yes, you can unpack that and put it over here because a judge has ruled on it. Right. But now, when we look at Johnny Depp after the fact, and we're learning more things from the deposition that we never saw publicly, we're learning that Johnny Depp's hands weren't clean. And I'm not saying that Johnny Depp should not have been deemed innocent or not because what Amber Heard did was wrong. But again, there's so much nuance here and it's not black and white. And we're only seeing go Britney, free Britney. Right. And I agree with that sentiment. But, for so but long, you have to remember that there's other people involved that don't get to share their side of the story. Oh, totally. And that must be the worst punishment on the planet to go on social media and be called names when maybe you're both complicit. But in 13 years, she had that happen to her. But I'm she couldn't speak out. She couldn't take coffee, totally. a Tylenol. She couldn't make a phone call. I just call. don't think anybody should be taking sides right now. I agree. That's I agree. just my opinion. I agree with you. I'm sort of right. I don't know. I just care about those two kids. Yeah. It's just That's like, I, just, I, I think about. there's a bigger lesson here that we're missing in that, like, we're, we see, we all always treat these situations like we're kids like this is going to work out and this the conservatorship is wrong the conservator Ship is there because things are falling apart. You don't know that. And when you, you don't know that. I do. I grew. I grew it, up with it. I, I do. No, I do I know, know exactly about that. You don't that. know her case on this. A judge. I, I, right. I, I, right. And and I'm not saying it was right. It, I'm sure it was bad. But when you have to bring a conservatorship in, that means we are at rock bottom and we have gone through that and we're going to the earth's I core. Hear you. Yeah. So like when we try and sit back like in our air conditioned studio, like I think they should have done this. What when you have to do things like I, people I know had to do, which is uh, have people removed in real time that's that's when I want that's when we really start understanding the nuance that you're talking Thank about you. Sam there's a lot going Compassion on passion all around exactly it's not as easy as people think all right so a new documentary this is crazy about actor Army Hammer's alleged abuse is set to air on Discovery Plus so it's called House of Hammer and interviews multiple women who claimed Army was violent in their relationship watch your boundaries a little bit at a time you're his completely. These are messages that are being sent literally within seconds of each other. I mean, he said, I'm 100% a cannibal. I'm freaking out. It was all he wanted to ever talk about. Then you get a note that says I'm going to bite the out of you. And he was just like acted mad. So the doc also goes into Army's family and exposes five generations of alleged abuses of power by men in Army's family, including his great-grandfather, oil tycoon, Armand Hammer. Uh, what do you think about exposing this family? Uh, and you might have a personal story or no? Sorry. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm a cannibal. I'm not gonna come out on, can on television and say that. No, no, no. With that. no I told you Sam. You him or something? No. Okay, sorry. Oh my goodness, This is a Sam. business class coming up again. Yeah, this uh. is how things get blurred a little <laughs> sorry, bit. Sorry. No, during the morning meeting, okay. Armin Hammer is the guy's name. Armin, that's the Armin. grandfather. Yeah. Arm yeah, and I was like, wait. Army Hammer comes from Arm and Hammer, like the. A lot of people believe that. That's not true. It's not. No. I'm that's where I was actually, going. I'm glad you said. Not that. that I'm a cannibal. No, you're not a cannibal. <laughs> yeah, but that's I'm where I was going. Most people assume that he's from that family. No. I totally thought he was. Like, I can't believe I didn't know that. No, you're and right. It, apparently, I was. Sam, right. as, answer, am, am I <laughs> tripping? Because I think there is some exploitation going on here. Like when we talk about Netflix shows and everything that's on your queue, it's always super attractive people doing something illegal or sexual. And I feel like here we are again, rich, good. -looking looking guy doing something illegal or Welcome sexual. We're not going to we're not going to get to the bottom yeah, of this. Yeah, tabloids. But Welcome to the tabloids. That's what happens. Beautiful people doing really weird things. And for I'm I think this guy is like should be locked up. I'm really like this really scares me. He seems very cultish like of a leader. I tell you when to eat, when to sleep, who you talk to. I will bite you, I will eat you. Again, I'm not there, king. There's a lot I'm of dom sub Let relationships. Me, you're right yeah, but that's I'm not king shaming. Consent. That's not consent, right? Yeah. I don't feel from what at least they said on that tape, he was like text kept coming, kept coming. 
I don't know. This guy seems weirdly dangerous. And I understand the exploitation part of it, but we all saw the fallout and the justice from the R. Kelly documentary, right? right? Some people could say that was exploitative as well, but at the end of the day, some a lot of those victims saw justice. And they were underage, though. And yes, allegedly. Yeah, but I don't know if you thought underage or not. If something's consensual, like even if these two are of age and one's consenting and one's not, or it's not a consensual relationship, those women would also deserve some sort of justice. I'm not saying that he's guilty because I've not seen the documentary. I don't know anything about they it. They are I will accusing watch it. him of abuse, though. Okay, I'll it. watch it before yeah. I form an opinion, but I did see the Marilyn Manson one, somebody that I used I to saw listen that too. to regularly, and I will not listen to Marilyn Manson after that because the evidence was so damning. With Evan Rachel Wood and everything. With Evan Rachel Wood and a laundry list of other females where there's actual footage of the... That video shoot was very wow. disturbing. Yeah, it was, it was a lot disturbing. going Disturbing. Wow. Um, are, have you, are, you, are you gonna watch this? Yeah. What? You heard out of time. <laughs> I did, but I had already started to. <laughs> <laughs> you so always honest. put me on the spot. <laughs> and people at home are like, why is Jeff being rude? There's a t we have yeah. to go to I commercial break. <laughs> they happen at the same time. When they say out of time, I start You heard question. that. You <laughs> at the same time.